I'm I'm a little bit savvy, but mm -hmm. I, I don't think I know. But I'm I'm up to the latest and greatest. Well, I, I was just asking the questions. Um, I think you might have to mute me because I'm getting some feedback. Yeah. You might have to mute your phone. Is that better? I'm good. I, I'm getting I'm a lot of feedback, and I'm not sure why. Okay, there it is. Is that, um, are you still getting feedback, you saw? Did you do something, Malcolm? I muted you. Yeah, no, I'm still getting the feedback, so I'm not sure why, but we, we can go on. I was asking the question mainly because some of the 10 tips that I was going to talk about for um, small businesses from a cybersecurity standpoint, it has to do with sometimes if you have employees. Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to um, get a sense on whether um, anyone on the line had employees that they needed to be concerned about, or, or was it more individual, a smaller office? A smaller office. Well, I mean, I, I have my siblings, so I don't think that she's trying to hack me. <laughs> but um, um, uh, I no, I don't have any other employees. But of that. okay, well, let me. I, I am I am, however, um, starting to do a sales um, build it in my sales team. Um, so from us, so they will be doing some off site type of type of work. Okay. Um, what I want okay. them to do and have access to certain accounts and certain things like that. Well, you know, the two well, things that you said just now um, are, are two issues that need to be you have to have concerns with cybersecurity. First of all, um, if you have people who are doing sales, of course they are collecting customer information. I'm not sure how much um, PII, personally identifiable information that they're collecting while they're out there with sales. But from that standpoint, of course, you have to be concerned about privacy and security of individual data or company data. So, um, you know, that, that goes not only from the standpoint of information that they're collecting, but data that you are storing on your computers. Um, of course, you have to have the appropriate tools in place so that the, um, it, I mean, ultimately, you would want that information to be encrypted in some form or fashion. And I'm sure there are plenty of tools out there that would allow you to help you do that. The second part of the, what you said is having individuals out in the field. Um, not only are they collecting this information outside of the office, but of course, you know, their um, tools and technologies that they use, their laptops, their PDAs, their telephones, all these things can be lost or stolen. And there's a major concern. I mean, not from a small business standpoint, but I think you heard about the Veterans Administration breach several years ago where a laptop was taken out of the building with um, information on it and it was stolen or lost. That is always a possibility. So when you're Employees so are out in the field. field. There's, another There's another level of security that you have to have on their equipment. That you have to have on equipment. Mm -hmm. um, I, of course, I, everybody I is concerned, concerned about mobile devices. Um, regardless of the size of your organization, you know that mo mobile devices you know that can be a big be security a big and management security challenge. And management um, challenge. Um, Mobile devices hold your confidential, confidential information, information, the individuals, the individuals, confidential information, and it can also have information about your organization or your business. And you need to make sure that, once again, I keep bringing up the fact that data needs to be encrypted. You have to have um, security applications installed on those devices. Um, you have to do as much as you can to prevent people from stealing the information. Um, if the phone is either lost or even if it's in the possession of your employee and they're on a public network, that information can be stolen also. Um, 
So from just from what so you from, said, just from what you said, just a couple of things. I have just people doing sales, and I have when they're out mobile. You can mobile, see there's a lot of security implications that you have to be concerned. About. That you, have to be concerned. you have any questions about that? You have any questions about that? Uh, no, I don't have any questions about those at this time. I find what you're talking about to be um, very useful. So, um, so um, you know, each one of the you know, each one uh, of issue kind of uh, snowballs kind through of snowball the next one. The next one. Um, I'm not sure um, how not sure often how your employees often might be out using uh, Wi-Fi uh, network. Wi do they have the ability to, to do that? To do that? Money. Okay. Say that again, ma'am. I'm sorry. Sometimes you're, while your Sometimes employees are out, they may have to connect to an unsecure, unsecure Wi-Fi network. Wi-Fi network. Right, right, right. Um, I, um, it's very, very it's important very, that your employees are aware of the fact, of, the fact of, of how insecure, how insecure the public, public networks are. Um, a lot of people um, will walk, walk into a McDonald's, walk into Wegman, anywhere, Wegman, and sign anywhere, on to these networks, networks um, because um, they need Wi-Fi access, wi access and not realize, not realize uh, anyone, anyone could tap into those networks, into networks and, and network steal data. So I'm not sure. Well, so it well, probably well, depends on how large your organization is. Is as to whether is you to provide, provide a secure channel, secure channel for your employees for your to employees um, work on a public um, network. Have you heard of network. virtual VPN? VPN. Yes. Virtual private network. Virtual private network. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. They're, I, they're, once again, they're, once they're not um, easy to install, install and they're not inexpensive they're not to install. Expensive. But, um, but those are something um, that you definitely are. need to think about if you have employees who are out in the field who have to connect to the company network. Well, I mean, I, I personally, um, I would not, I try at all costs to prevent from um, going on a public network uh, because I know that they're very unsecure and all kinds of data can be leaked in and obtained through connecting through those networks. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, I try at all costs to prevent from having to connect. So what do you use, a, a hotspot or something on your phone or something like that? Or not do it at all? Yeah, I, like I, I try not to do it at all. Okay, all right. I try not to do it at all because I mean, I do know the, the increase in risk that is associated with doing that. Right, but as, you know, but as your business grows and you have more sales people involved in, um, you know, showing people information about your products, maybe doing demonstrations and things like that, you that that need might come up, and you need to definitely be sure that you have a secure way for your employees to uh, enter your system. Right, and and I would one hundred percent agree with you. What what would you think would be the best? uh method in doing so um like i said i i work for the university of maryland university college and uh we have a secure virtual private network that we okay. can connect to so when i'm traveling and i get onto a um a public uh wi-fi network immediately i um uh, launch the secure vpn application And that's probably what you'd have to do. And what would be the cost associated uh, with that? You know, I don't have the cost, but I can I can look that up for you. I can look that up for you. I'm not sure what the cost would be. Okay. Do you have one? Um, do you have a virtual private network, Malcolm? I, I didn't hear you. Are you might be muted. I muted myself. I'm sorry. Yeah, I do not. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so, you know, kind of going back to the beginning uh, and talking about employees, it's it really is important that people understand basic security practices and policies. Um, you have to make sure that your employees understand the importance of having strong passwords and following guidelines that you set forth from a, using 
um, for the appropriate use of the internet. And, um, you know, while I'm talking about passwords, I think everybody at this time knows that every that you should have you, you know, unique passwords and you should you should change your password every three months um, for the, the best in the best organizations and for the best practices. That is a requirement. It's an automatic requirement mm -hmm. that you change your password. So the system prompts the person to change their password in a certain amount of time. If they don't do it, then they are locked out of the system. Um, so that that is, you know, the ultimate. If you don't have that type of capability in your systems, making sure that employees do that on their own is something that's very important. Right. Um, yeah, I remember. That when and I was, uh, um, uh, you know, once again, talking about something that's additional cost, you can do something that's called multi-factor authentication, and that's some that's a that is, uh, uh, those are passwords that require the um, person to implement, to input at least a couple of items before they get into the system and just not a password. Yeah, I believe Google has implemented that in a lot of other like, CRMs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, Google does have multi-factor uh, authentication and ever since I turned it on, <laughs> I haven't been able to get into my email. So. <laughs> Oh man, it, it, it is so secure. <laughs> yeah, they're not playing around. <laughs> but I, I, I haven't had the uh, opportunity to actually figure out what's going on. But ever since I turned the multi-factor uh, authentication on, my account's been so, locked up. So Funny. Lewis, that, bring, that brings up a good point, right? With you know, how do you balance the security with operations, and specifically, you know, with, with small businesses? You know, that that could like that multi-factor authentication could actually cripple a small business by not being able to get to your communications and not being able to get to things or actually, or slowing you down. How do you balance that? Well, that, and, and that's a good question. And I, you know, I teach uh, cybersecurity management and policy, and that is one of the major things that we have to, we teach mm -hmm. is all about risk management and risk assessment. Mm -hmm. You know, if you really are serious about figuring out what what assets you have and how do you protect them, the ones that you are going to fully protect, the, the way you're going to mitigate risks, the risks that you're going to accept, and all and all of that plays into what you're talking about. You have the business owner has to sit down, do a risk assessment, risk analysis, a vulnerability analysis to understand how you know, and it's not only balancing um, security and productivity, it's balancing security and, and money. Yeah. You know, how, how much you're going to pay for it. Right. right. There, there's no straight answer for that without sitting down to do a full risk analysis right. and understanding what you want to mitigate. What, what are the, ex there are sometimes acceptable risks. Yeah. Um, uh, and then, you know, some, some of them that some risks, you can also get insurance for. So right. there are ways that you can tackle all of the things that you have to tackle as right. a business owner once you sit down and understand what's important to your company. Exactly. Yeah. But you uh, you're bringing up an excellent point in that you can make something so secure that the productivity levels of people are are uh, impeded. Yeah. Yeah. I know that um, when I set up my no, somebody ended up. Uh, getting into one of my accounts uh, one time and they changed my password and I believe that person was from somewhere in Europe maybe like the UK or somewhere and I had the hardest time to try to get into my uh, my account once that two-step verification was on it was very challenging because some of the questions that they asked you were so off. And then I had totally done other things to other accounts, like a two-step verification that linked back to that account that I couldn't get in. It, it was it was a nightmare. I had to go through like four different email accounts before I could finally get into my account. Wow. Yeah. yeah that's, 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 a, that's a problem, right? Um. 
I think that it was a, a problem. It was a problem, but once I set everything up, I think I, 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 I'm good. Like I kind of, it, it's like I knew because of how, how I think about, you know, technology and being secure, I, I made it so certain things were old. Like the questions that they were asking me were like, when did this account get created? And some of those accounts were like, years you know i might i was like a teenager wow so wow i uh you know i had some challenges but i was able to do it and i'm glad that you know i had some of those security features set up on my account the way i did but uh because i was quickly able to realize that somebody had compromised my account Um, so, so thinking about um, protecting your computers, so, you know, you have to make sure your employees are uh, have this uh, awareness training that they need to keep themselves and the organization safe. You need to um, be sure that, you know, the use of Wi-Fi is, is um, properly done. You also have to make sure that you protect the computer's uh, as we were talking about, they can be stolen or lost, but you need to, pr- you know, you need to protect them from the standpoint of keeping your computers and your networks um, safe from cyber attacks. So, of course, everybody has antivirus software these days. I, I'm sure. Um, that's keeping the machine clean, making sure that your antivirus software is taking care of any. Um, malware that might be on your computer or trying to reach your computer, you need to have um, the latest and greatest in antivirus and security software. Um, As far as web browsers and operating systems, I think all of you know that there are um, attacks on those all the time. And in order to keep up the best defenses against those, you need to make sure that you're using the latest web browsers and the latest operating systems with all of the appropriate patches that are given out with those um, browsers and operating systems and applying them because those are the only way you're going to defend yourself against the viruses and the malware and the other online threats that are out there. So um, antivirus scans after each update, you uh, install all the software updates as soon as they are available. Now, you know, in large organizations, we used to have the problem of uh, applying these software updates because, you know, you had thousands of computers out there Mm -hmm. and it was not always um, appropriate or the best timing to apply a patch to um, a system that was being used by thousands of users because you never knew if the patch was going to break something else. Um, that was one of the issues we had in large, large organizations. But in small businesses, if, there really shouldn't be any reason why you can't install any software updates and, and uh, patches as soon as they come out. Mm-hmm. And I know well, we're not all, um, we're all guilty of not doing that, I should right. say. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of times it just comes down to, you know, that, that the user not necessarily knowing what it is and you know, maybe a little apprehensive of, of loading something without knowing what it is. And then the other question or the other comment I was going to make is more of a question. Um, uh, Microsoft versus Apple. I was talking to somebody today about that where um, with Apple and the way their oper- operating system is, it, it, it doesn't have as many patches and updates and for one, is that the reason why the government is going that way? And then two, is is that is that valid? Is that true? Um, you said you said that Mac Macs have fewer um, patches and and updates and and, and the yeah. Need I mean, for it, I mean, t- traditionally, um, there have been more. There's been more malware in the Microsoft environment than it has mm-hmm. in the Mac environment. I would. Mm-hmm. I, I, did you say the government is going that way? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I wasn't aware of that. Of the, yeah. Well, at least at NASA. At NASA, I mean, that's that's they don't even use PCs and Microsoft software at all. Yeah. Well, that traditionally that has been the case. 
Mm-hmm. Um, okay. In addition to that, on the on, on the mobile phone front, I just read some statistics that there are more viruses on the uh, Android front than there is mm-hmm. on the Apple. Really? Yeah. Uh, it, ma- mainly, open... mainly because when apps are developed for Apple, yeah. they have a, a vetting process that they have to right. go through. Uh, right, on, right, right. on the Android, Android side, they don't have to. Exactly. Well, yeah, they, they have that open innovation where they, they let programmers kind of develop their own thing. Right. So so how many of you have um, antivirus software on your phones? Oh, I do. I do not. I do. I do not. You do? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Did I hear you I, say very lowly that you didn't have it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do not at all. I, 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 thought, I think about it, but I just, just haven't done it. Well, you know, it's so funny. I was at a conference earlier this week and this woman was giving a presentation about mobile devices and how vulnerable they are. And she, Mm -hmm. you know, she brought it home when she said, here you are walking around with a 600 plus dollar um, uh, phone. You um, have access to most of your bank accounts and all of your money on that phone. You, yeah. Yeah. you know, you use that phone, you have pictures of your family, all of your history on it. Um, you're doing all of your financial work on it. You're probably doing, you may have, you know, cameras to your house, you know, Wi-Fi cameras and things like mm-hmm. that. And she said, and people, and people will lay those down anywhere. anywhere. Right. They'll lay them on a table and walk away. They'll just leave them sitting on the table where somebody can run by and take it. They leave it in their hip pocket where somebody can just reach in and take it. And she says, when you sit down and think about all of the access that someone would have right. about you and your finances, okay. if they took your phone, you would take better care of it. And you would put some antivirus software on it. Right, right. And she kind of brought that home after, you know, saying all of that, which was kind of true, but. Oh, so, so you know, I, I can't I can't stress enough how mobile devices create a lot of challenges, not only for the individual, but, you know, if you have somebody accessing your business data using their phone, do you want do you really want that? Do you really want, um, you know, the fact that somebody is taking home the company information and you not knowing what's happening with it? All right. Right. I, um, so thinking about, you know, we talked about the mobile devices and the laptops and the uh, uh, the data and in, in including the data. You, of course, people forget that a security um, issue is backing up your data also. Mm-hmm. You know, you need to make sure that all your word processing and spreadsheets and databases and financial files and all of that stuff is backed up um, at least weekly and should be stored off site or on the cloud. So um, that's something to think about. Now we could have a whole nother discussion about whether having your data in the cloud is a good thing. <laughs> yeah, that's what we talked. We were talking about that last, last week. Um, very interesting because I mean, it, it, it provides an opportunity for scale, you know, for you to scale if you're a small business at a fraction of the cost. But as you know, as you well know, the, the, the security concerns are there and they're, they're valid and you have to address them. Um, let's see. The other thing that I wanted um, to just kind of. Uh, cover was the fact going back to talking about employees and the access to your data. Um, you know, you want to you. There's this issue. This there's this uh, concept called separation of duties, and um, it's kind of hard. Maybe it may hard be hard to do in a in a small business when people in the business may have multiple responsibilities. But you know, right. you, you have to make sure that you at least think about separation of duties and maybe giving employees access to only the specific data and the specific systems that they need for their jobs um, and not be able to install software without any permission. 
And you know, those those are important things. But when you think about um, once again, I keep I hate to keep harping on the mobile devices, but how can you really control what somebody does on their mobile device? You're allowing them to use it for your business. You really don't have control over what they're doing with that phone. So that, you know, it's just some of the things you need to think about as far as um, the limits that you will have on someone's personal phone when they have your company data on it. Right. No, I mean, I, I, I would think that it would be best to try to like purchase a phone for that or a laptop or something for that individual to use strictly for business or what have you. I mean, wouldn't you say that that's, that should be the best practice? I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. I, I said that I would, um, you, you know, like me, I would give a, a, a person or an employee a phone that the co- it was under the company that was purchased or a laptop that was purchased by the company just so it's strictly for business. Right. You're absolutely right. And, and right. Um, that's, that has been the traditional method of, of um, employees working for a company. But all of a sudden, I think, uh, and I know in, in the public and private sector, there's a lot of talk of what they call BYOD, where br- people are bringing their own devices mm-hmm, device. to work. Yep. And mm-hmm. some organizations, some agencies actually think that it increases productivity. So if we're going to allow this, the employee to do certain things with their phone, mm-hmm. then their productivity might be increased. But once again, with, if there really is a productivity increase, um, what are some of the security concerns? And But like you said, if you can nip that in the bud and just make sure that people are not using their devices for company business. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I guess in a sense, like, I am more, since I, since I have an understanding of security, um, I don't, I, like I'm very leery about those types of things. Like I'm very leery about a person using their own device because I mean, for me, that could like be proprietary data or like you, you know a person like a client of mine. You know that information is confidential. I can't I can't just have my stuff on anything. So uh, yeah, when I was at when I was at NASA, that's what we. Would- what we did, we had um, bring your own device. Um, and I, I, I petitioned to really try to get some encryption software on the, the phones. And they said, well, it's not really a security risk. And I, you know, I thought different of it, but I just said, you know, whatever. I wasn't a secure, I'm not the security person. I just thought I would bring it to everybody's attention, but they decided to go against it. Um, and I mean, there are studies that say, you know, it does help productivity because the alternative is like what you're talking about, Alvin, it is having two phones, right? You have a personal phone, and then you have a business phone. And most people don't want that. Right. Uh, that's, uh, that's basically what I had um, as far as, as, far as um, uh, uh, an overview of uh, the cybersecurity concerns in small businesses. I think when we were talking about it earlier, you know, the biggest issue for a small business versus a larger business is, you know, cost. You know, yeah, it's gonna come. It's gonna come down to cost. And um, but see, the the way I look at it is, you know, sometimes you could pay that cost up front. Or you could pay that cost later, because if you have a data breach and you lose a whole bunch of like proprietary information, that could be costly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's that you're exactly right. So, you, you know, they, I, my mom told me I'd rather be safe than sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, in, in my mind, I think it's, it's it's like what we talked about. It's a balancing act. You got to know what you know what's worth protecting, as opposed to just making making a blanket. And, and well, which what's worth protecting and what risk you can share or transfer to somebody else. Um, as, opposed as opposed to, to taking all the risks risk yourself. Right. The risk, the risk like assessment that. is the main, um, the main thing. Regardless of the size of your business, your business, you should, do, should the do the risk assessment. Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Uh, um, one question that I do have that I'm actually very... Any other questions? Any other questions? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Noise. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was, are there any other questions? Um, yes, I actually do have a question. Um, when, uh, what are your feelings on virtual assistants? On what? On what? Virtual assistants. Virtual. Virtual. Assistant. 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 Correct. Is that, uh, I'm not uh, sure what you, sure what you mean. Like, for example, um, let's just say I have, uh, like, because I'm into real estate. Um, so if I'm a real estate investor and I'm dealing with, let's just say, a person who might go through my emails um, that I might hire to like, you know, either sort through emails that, you know, wouldn't be important to me or emails that would that they would work on specifically dealing with, you know, real estate invest uh, like maybe it's uh, a person who's a motivated seller that's looking to buy, sell their house. Um how would you handle them hand, hand like what would be the best way to for them for me to make sure i'm secure and them having that type of information okay i i'm, okay, not, I'm not totally familiar, totally familiar with, with you saying that the virtual assistant is, is a product, product is it an automated no. product or is it a person no it could be, it could be a person um that like that might be in another country even like they they really might be in the US they could be in another country but they would perform a task from another place maybe they have access to an account or maybe whatever task i'm having to do um, might be just something menial to create a system uh, within my organization how how would like i under i do understand that that's a level of security uh that's a that's a risk but how could i handle that or mitigate the risk well my you know my suggestion would be that um you have to do your due diligence as far as any company that you would hire to do that um i would you you know it depends on the type of assistance that you need i would i would be leery of hiring a company that might that might uh, make, decisions uh, make decisions about financial, financial things for my organization. my organization. So if they so if they, they were they basically were just, just picking up leads for, for me, or, me or, or um you know providing you know, provide me with some information about, about customers, customers that might that might be sufficient, sufficient if I did my book did, did, did my due diligence or was a reputable, reputable. Um, I, you know, uh, on the other hand, I thought you were talking you were about maybe an automated, automated service, service. Uh, and, uh, with and with that would that have would some have artificial, artificial intelligence, intelligence that, would that would allow it to, to do some of the some of thinking for you in, in mining your emails and customer requests and things like that. So, um, either one uh, either requires, requires some monitoring, monitoring and due diligence to make sure that it's a reputable company. Right. I would love to I have, it love automated, to have it automated something or something other that would do my email do my for me. <laughs> yeah, like I just right. thought about right. uh, trying to get out. Yeah. Mm. I just thought about uh, how to build a code to try to do that because I never thought about that. And if I could, if I could do a, like write a code for that, that would be cool. Um, an um, another. Uh, uh, I'm gonna have to mute have you, to um, you um, Alvin, because. Uh, so another another, 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 way, you another way, you way you can think, think about, about this is, um, uh, uh, 
really identifying really what you want what him you want to, do. to do. Now, now you know, if it's just know, managing it's your managing CRM, your CRM um, um, your customer relationship customer management, management, if it's just answering emails, stuff like that. Um, I think that's, I think that's, you can probably get around that without having too much security impl impl implicate implications. But um, when you're talking about paying for things, so I have, I know people that use virtual assistants to pay for their, their Facebook ads. And so they give them credit card information um, or buying things for them. I mean, uh, uh, the way businesses are going now with, Everything is, you know, sort of concierge service and you can you can basically pay anyone to do anything for you. Um, there is that. Um, that level, of, you know, security with your credit cards and accounts because you're either too busy or, or, or don't want to do it yourself. Um, and you pay a virtual assistant or a nanny or a you know some sort of concierge concierge service to pick up your dry cleaning and pay for it or um like i said pay for your facebook ads your linkedin ads um and and you know i'm not really sure how you get around it. I, I guess if you have a you develop the relationship with them as lois was saying and, and you know that they're reputable but um I, yeah i'm not really sure how there are applications out there where like LastPass, where you can share, um, you don't give your passwords to the assistant, but they can access the applications that you use. Like for example, if you got Constant Contact or um, any lead management system, um, MailChimp or one of those, um, you, you, you can set up a password and set up your own profile, but your assistant has access to to that, not your password, but they can go into the system as you, because in most cases, if you're a small business owner, you you have admin rights to those type of systems like AWeb or email marketing and systems. And you can share the application with the assistant without giving them your password. And so, so Lois, I'm gonna say um, your thoughts on, I know this is a big no-no, right? And so with Alvin bringing up that, that uh, the concept of virtual assistants. What about like in your business if you have an executive assistant and you give them the password to your accounts? To, so let's just say hypothetically you have a, a a fairly decent sized business where you have an executive assistant and that person does follow up for you. The person has set your appointments and all of that sort of stuff. Is it I mean, I've seen this happen where they have the CEO's passwords to everything. How do you how do you get around that? Oh no, you you shouldn't do that. Uh, uh, and that was uh, I thought one of the things that's in, you know in the list of major um, you know thinking about separation of duties and things like that. Mm -hmm. You you should each employee should have their own uh, separate sign-ons and passwords. Sharing of passwords doesn't doesn't allow you to figure, to have any audit trail of what mm. happened in your system. So if you should have a breach or if something happens to the data or there's some financial information that's missing, if you know somebody if people are using each other's passwords, you'll never figure out what happened. So the exactly. first rule of thumb is to make sure that everyone has their own individual uh, sign-ons with their the only the privileges that they should have, and um, never share passwords and sign-ons. Yep. And I, I'm not, you know, I don't care how busy the CEO yeah. is. Um, right. That should not. <laughs> that should not be the case. Exactly. Good, 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 good. And then the, um, I had another question. You mentioned earlier about you know just encryption. Is there a um, what are the options for small businesses like you know for encryption? So I know I have McAfee on my laptop, and then it offers um, at no cost. I don't think there's any other cost, but it 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 provides um, yes, yeah, called McAfee Live Safe, and it it. You can put like two devices on there. Um, what other than this, this McAfee? What what other options for encryption 
do you suggest for small businesses? You know, I don't have the tools off the top of my head, but mm-hmm. most of the um, the antivirus, Symantec and McAfee and uh, Kaspersky, mm-hmm. all of those guys have some kind of options for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, one mm-hmm. of the things that's also important uh, on my laptop, my work laptop, if I try to use a thumb drive, um, mm-hmm. I get a message saying that I cannot, uh, the thumb drive is only going to be read only until I encrypt it. So there's, oh, you know, there's all kinds of software that will will support the encryption that you need. I don't, I don't have the t- names off the top of my head. Is, but is that 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 um, that protection is through the antivirus you have on your machine? Um, I, I think I'm pretty sure the big guys, the three that I name, have encryption yeah. op- opportunities. Okay in their software where it is. I'm not sure, but I'm sure that they do. Right. And so that you, there's two things about encryption that you have to understand. There's data uh, in transit and data at rest. Mm. Um, Data in transit is um, information that's moving across the network. And data at rest is the data that's sitting on your in your servers, on your hard drives, and things like that. Both mm-hmm. of those things need to be encrypted. So mm-hmm. it's not only the fact that uh, you know all of the data that's sitting on the hard drive on the laptop is encrypted. It's not a good. It's not going to be useful if you're passing that data over the network and the uh, data in transit is not also encrypted. So those are just a couple of concepts that you have to think about when you start looking into encryption. Good stuff. Data at rest. I didn't know that. Data in transit. Yeah, I'm gonna be looking up. Trying to trying to lock down my phone and and um, use encryption software. Uh, Any other questions? Any, Oh, I think I'll be talking. Oh, no. no. Oh, I was muted, but uh, I I thought I was muted still. No, you're not. No. Oh, no, I'm fine. Uh, It was great. I appreciate everything. Good. Well, thank you so much, Liz. Um, If you don't, uh, do you have any other closing comments or things you just want to mention? No, I think, um, you know, there's a, there's, a lot that's in common from a cybersecurity standpoint and secure computing standpoint for both um, small businesses and large businesses. I mean, everybody has to um, take their appropriate steps to make sure that they are protecting their assets. And then they have, to, I think the biggest issues come in where, um, you know, where you have costs, and you have and number you have of number employees of that you're trying to trying protect, to protect or, protect or protect 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 data from. from. Um, you have a larger threat of insider threat with large large organizations, uh, even though it can happen in a small business environment. So you know there's a there's a lot in common as far as steps that you need to take. I think the difference is you know the the scale of which you implement things. That might change, but for the most part, you have to think about the same concerns. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. 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 Well, thank you so much. much. You're welcome. I appreciate it. I I want to, what I did was I recorded most of this and I'm going to be sending, I'll probably send you it so you can have it for your archives and um, I'll send it to the rest of the folks in the, the meetup as well. But. Thank you. I really appreciate this. Thank you. We'll talk to you later. Thanks. Okay. Oh, well, thank you very much. I hope you have a great weekend. All right. I'm going to okay. go off the record here. Thanks, Thanks Louis. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.